Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox and I'd like to welcome you to episode 165 of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. The FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report is sponsored by Advanced Compliance Solutions. Today I take a look at the BHP Billiton Securities and Exchange Commission FCPA Enforcement Action. This enforcement action has a lot of interesting information and lessons learned for the compliance practitioner. Uh, both in the way of violation of internal controls and cooperation and remedy with the Securities and Exchange Commission going forward. The episode comes in in just over 17 minutes. I hope that uh, you will find it interesting. I would also ask you, if you're listening on iTunes, to rate me on iTunes. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. Today I wanted to take a look at the BHP Billiton FCPA Enforcement Action. This was an action brought by the Securities and Exchange Commission against BHP for violation of the internal controls provisions found in the accounting provisions of the FCPA. This enforcement action has several notable issues in it and I think it's very significant for the compliance practitioner going forward. I noted that it was an SEC enforcement action, and I would like to emphasize that it was not a criminal enforcement action brought by the Department of Justice. So we have a civil action only in the form of a cease and desist order. The enforcement action was based upon conduct by the company around its gifts, travel, and hospitality program for the 2008 Beijing Olympics. The company was going to create a package worth between $12,000 to $16,000 to send people to Beijing to attend the Olympics. Obviously, this is a uh, pretty high dollar amount spent for gifts, hospitality, and travel. And because BHP anticipated that foreign government officials might be recipients of this program. They set up special internal controls and procedures to govern who they would dole these trips out to. Unfortunately for BHP, uh, they did not follow their own internal controls which they set out, and this was the uh, basis for the SEC's FCPA enforcement action. The first lesson from this matter is that simply having a compliance program, a written compliance program, a paper compliance program, even if it's robust, does not uh, guarantee that you will be in compliance with the FCPA. What you have to do is actually the doing of compliance. And I think this is the lesson that every compliance practitioner needs to take to heart uh, for their individual compliance program. The, uh, the company, BHP, created an Olympic Sponsorship Steering Committee, and under this they had a further ethics subcommittee that was set up to review applications by certain business unit sponsors for uh, uh, who, would, who would be awarded these hospitality packages. BHP set up the hospitality package specifically to reinforce and develop relationships with key stakeholders in China and indeed across the globe. This uh, clearly was going to have application to and implications on the FCPA because officials and representatives of state-owned enterprises were going to be offered these programs and hospitality packages. So there was a form that needed to be filled out. Certain information was to be given to the ethics uh, subcommittee under the Olympic Committee, and it was supposed to be reviewed and updated on uh, a regular basis, which would allow the committee to advise the business unit sponsors of potential problems. So some of the questions that the business unit sponsor was required to fill out were things like, what business obligations existed or were expected to be developed between the proposed invitee and BHP? Was BHP negotiating or considering any contracts, license agreements, <clears throat> or seeking rights to access with a third party 
where the proposed invitee was in a position to influence the outcome of the decision? Do you as the business sponsor believe that the offer of proposed hospitality would be likely to create an impression that there was an improper connection between the provision of the hospitality and the business that was being negotiated, conducted, or considered, or in any way perceived as a breach of BHP's Guide to Business Conduct? And were there any other matters relating to the relationship between BHP and the proposed invitee that you believe should be considered in relation to the provision of hospitality under BHP's Guide to Business Conduct? BHP required each application to be filled out and signed by an employee with knowledge of the invitee's relationship with the company and approved in writing by the president of the relevant business group or uh, country president. There was a cover sheet which included short descriptions of the anti-bribery provisions in the Code of Conduct and uh, also the uh, BHP's, uh, the, uh, rather the FCPA. However, the controls did not adequately address the anti-bribery risks associated with this. There were several criticisms of these uh, internal controls by the SEC. First, BHP did not require independent legal or compliance review of hospitality applications outside of someone in the business unit which was submitting the application and clearly did not communicate to his employee the, facts that the fact that the ethics panel um, would not uh, be given an up or down vote. So on the one hand, BHP's internal website said that hospitality applications were subject to scrutiny by the ethics panel, but that the, uh, and further, that the Olympic Sponsorship Steering Committee and the Global Ethics Panel Subcommittee would be approving things. However, other than reviewing about 10 hospitality applications for government officials in mid-2007, the OSSC, or the Olympic Sponsorship Steering Committee and Ethics Panel, did not review the appropriateness of individual hospitality applications or airfare requests. The Ethics Panel Charter simply stated that the role was to provide advice on ethics and compliance, but that the accountability stood with or rested with the business leaders. This clearly puts the business leaders in a conflict of interest if their business is dependent on certain foreign government officials or influencing certain foreign government officials, and yet these were the persons who could dole out a twelve to $16,000 hospitality package. Uh, the SEC also noted that some of the hospitality applications were not accurate or complete. Many identified an employee of a state-owned enterprise as simply a customer but failed to identify whether or not they were a representative of the government. Additionally, the SEC found that several questionnaires did not correctly note when the BHP had pending negotiations with a proposed recipient of the uh, largesse. Further, there were a number of examples where employees responding to questions did so incorrectly. Next, while the company had an annual guide to business conduct review certification process and generalized training, it really did not provide specific training to executives on either how to fill out the forms or how to evaluate an invitation to a government official. During the relevant time period, this portion of the guide uh, did not was not utilized fully, and there was not anything that uh, would reasonably, uh, any protections in place which could reasonably be regarded as an, uh, protections against undue influences. So um, the next criticism was although there was a indication about whether business was expected to be developed with an individual invitee, the company did not have any process for updating the hospitality applications or reassessing the appropriateness of the uh, if the conditions un, under which the forms were filled out were changed. Uh, so there was no ongoing monitoring, there was no updating, there was no uh, uh, information presented which would uh, allow uh, the company to reevaluate any government officials if their roles changed, if their titles changed, or if something else changed. 
the fine levied against BHP was $25 million, which the FCPA professor has noted is the largest civil penalty assessed by the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. And really, the um, I think the, the single biggest takeaway is that even with all of these forms, requirements for information, Nobody was really looking at them closely. Nobody was putting a second set of eyes on anything closely. No one was evaluating closely. No one was evaluating the roles of the proposed invitees, if they were foreign government officials, uh, to whether or not BHP had business with them or uh, would have business with them in the future, or they, even if they were in a position to uh, uh, ward business in the future. Clearly, uh, you have to have a segregation of duties in your FCPA or UK Bribery Act or any other best practices compliance program. You can't have the business unit sponsor or the person who is going to receive the benefits from the business making the decision of uh, handing out hospitality, particularly when it gets in the range of twelve to $16,000. Additionally, there was really no backup determination of whether wives or other family members would be traveling with the foreign government officials. This is clearly something that is prohibited by the FCPA. You can provide hospitality to foreign government officials under certain conditions, but it's a strict no-no uh, for wives, girlfriends, or other family members to be a part of a travel and hospitality package. So the clear message here is that you actually have to do compliance. And BHP is obviously a multinational, worldwide company headquartered in Australia. And for a company of this size, uh, and having a robust paper compliance program was not enough. The accounting provisions of the FCPA, that includes both books and records and the internal controls, in my opinion, are strict liability provisions. If you do not have controls which uh, fully protect against bribery and corruption, it can be a standalone FCPA violation, even if there is no evidence of bribes paid or corruption. And in this case, we didn't have any criminal enforcement action, so there was no evidence of bribes being paid in the uh, SEC cease and desist order. So the message here is, you have to do compliance. You can't simply uh, have an out-of-the-box, check-the-box, paper program in place. You really have to do the work of compliance. And doing the work of compliance, it's, I think, straightforward. And while, while it may not be an easy task, it's a task that you can do use by evaluating appropriate information, making a decision based upon the risk, and indeed the known risk, because it's clear if you have a foreign government official who's in a position to award you business, award you a contract, make a payment, or send business your way later, that you, you can't be in a position where you paid or given them hospitality in an amount of twelve to $16,000, even if it's for travel for the Olympics. You certainly can build relationships with state-owned foreign government officials, state-owned entities, well, the uh, foreign government officials, but there can't be a direct correlation, and your compliance program must have controls around not allowing you to do so. Uh, also incumbent, and, and pretty clearly the message was that you can't have the business unit guys who are getting the benefits of uh, increased sales through contracts be uh, the decision makers. You've got to have your compliance function, whether that be an ethics panel, an ethics committee, even if you have an Olympic uh, committee with an ethics subcommittee, that's going to be sufficient, but they actually have to do the work. We've seen numerous enforcement actions where there was a committee in place, but either that committee didn't do its job, the appropriate information was not uh, delivered to the committee, or there was something else. So it's really important that you actually do the work of compliance. I cannot emphasize that enough. The criticisms that have been levied against this enforcement action are around the SEC's evaluation of the internal controls. Yet, the FCPA itself 
does not specify any level of internal controls. And that's what's led me to opine in the past that you could have strict liability if the SEC evaluates your internal controls and found them to be lacking. There's a couple of other things that are of note about the uh, BHP enforcement action. And those were around the BHP's cooperation and remediation because the cooperation was uh, extensive with the Department of Justice and their remedial actions were significant. So in the cease and desist order itself, it said that B BP had retained outside counsel to assist it with its internal investigation, provided significant cooperation with the commission, uh, the SEC, by voluntarily producing large volumes of business, financial, and uh, accounting records from across the globe and facilitated interviews and provided the SEC with regular reports on the finding of the internal investigation. In the area of remedial action, uh, BHP created a compliance group within its legal department, which is separate and apart and independent from the business unit. The compliance group is responsible for FCPA compliance and reports directly to the company's general counsel and audit committee. The company reviewed its existing anti-corruption compliance programs and updated them, implementing other changes as well. <clears throat> it embodied, or excuse me, embedded independent anti-corruption managers into the business units and further enhanced its policies and procedures regarding hospitality, gift giving, use of third parties, business partners, and other high-risk compliance areas. The company enhanced its financial and auditing controls, including policies to specifically address address business conduct in high-risk markets. They also conducted updated and uh, enhanced training. So a lot of lessons learned from the BHP FCPA enforcement action brought by the Securities and Exchange Commission. I would invite you to read the uh, SEC cease and desist order because it lays out the facts in a very co co cogent, coherent manner. I've written about this, and uh, some of uh, my opinions are uh, attached in uh, uh, or blogs that I've written on this, so you can check out my blog, the FCPA Compliance and Ethics blog. And if you have any questions, you can give me a shout at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's a very significant FCPA enforcement action, and I hope you will consider it fully in incorporating many of these ideas, concepts, and uh, issues into your compliance program going forward. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening.